I got a very boring presentation and then I got a very interesting and exciting presentation. The content is same, everything is same. One is boring and one is exciting. Clap if you want a boring one. <laughs> if you clap, get out of the room. Now clap if you want an exciting one. So is it a conference or is it a celebration? Do you think it's a celebration? Beautiful. So, before I start my presentation, uh, this is the place where I live. Uh, this is Melbourne and one of uh, these buildings is our, our office, Enterprise Monkey office. But the content that I'm going to talk about today is Dark Monkey, Disruption, and The Smarter Way. And, and you would notice that I have mentioned The Smarter Way, not The Smart Way. So, I live in a place called Geelong, which is also called the Silicon Bay of Australia. How many of you have heard about the Silicon Valley? All right, a lot of, a lot of you. So Geelong, being a bay in, 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 in Australia, it's, it's a sister city to Melbourne, it's called uh, the Silicon Bay of Australia. And Enterprise Monkey has got their head office in uh, Geelong. And I'm also the general manager of ICT Geelong. So what is ICT Geelong? ICT Geelong is an IT industry cluster for the Geelong region, which means that we are responsible for the advancement of information technology industry in the regional area of Australia. And I head the team. So my responsibility is to make sure that we are cutting on cutting edge of the industry and the IT industry in Australia is growing day by day. I'll talk about the enterprise monkeys very soon. But before that, I want to talk about something really important. So we've got a lot of uh, people from academies over here as well. And I want to change and I want to shift the discussion a bit to something else, that, to something that I talked about in my, in my speech as well. Whenever we approach technology, we approach technology first from asking what and then going to how and, and reaching to why. I call this as a golden circle. Whenever we approach something, we need to start by asking why. And Enterprise Monkey, that's my company, focuses on why. All right, there are these amazing technologies out there. But what do we need them, these technologies for? Like, why do I need a, a, a bank on my hand? Or why do I need the amazing computational power? Why do I need a lot of data? What's the purpose? So it's really important to understand that technology is driven by a purpose, a cause. And Enterprise Monkey, uh, uh, we decide on having the smarter way. When we say having the smarter way, which means that you might think that you have become really smart now and we have got all the smart technologies out there, but there is definitely another smarter way of doing those things. We emphasize on automation, optimization, and intelligence, and I'll be briefing about these three things, what, what they stand for. But most importantly, uh, we are Australia's best e-business consultants. Uh, if you don't say it, Google it. Uh, best e-business consultants in Australia, or Google best application developers in Melbourne, and you will find Enterprise Monkey. We are also uh, known as uh, IT experts uh, in by the national newspapers of Australia. So we receive uh, 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 sort of regular calls from uh, newspapers and, and televisions. Uh, where they ask for our advice whenever there's a matter regarding uh, an important matter regarding information technology in Australia. Now, so what do we do actually? So this is the work part. Sorry. Mobile. And that's why, that's why I say that we have not become very smart in technology. There are still a lot of issues with the technologies that we get out there. Now, the, the, the technologies that we work on are enterprise applications, web and mobile applications, e-business consulting, and sales and marketing automation. But it doesn't matter at all. Today we are providing these services, they might change tomorrow. Because they are what of technology. And, and they do not matter. The thing that really matters is why do we do what we do? Why do we exist? Why do we provide these services? Why do organizations need enterprise application or web and mobile application? Why do they need sales and marketing automation? The answer is that we cure the monkey syndrome. 
And Young Monkey Syndrome is a trademark of enterprise monkey. To explain Young Monkey Syndrome, I would need to explain or narrate a story. Do you know the way human beings evolve? So we evolved from what? So theory of uh, uh, Darwin, uh, Darwinism theory of evolution says that we evolved from monkeys, right? So, and then monkeys became apes and human beings are the most smarter form of apes. Which means that this human being out there is nothing but a smarter version of the ape. And this ape is a smarter version of this ape. And these apes are smarter version of what? This particular monkey. Which means that this monkey, he could not evolve with time because he could not become smarter. And this human being is human being. We are human beings and, and not apes or, or, or not the previous species because we, we evolve with time and we develop our smartness. Now, there's a, people believe that human evolution stopped. That once, once we, human beings were formed, our evolution stopped. No, it did not happen. You know, when human beings were first formed, how we were commuting, we were walking, right? Then we invented what? Wheel. So we invented wheel and then we started moving fast. Right? But when we invented wheel and we started moving fast, we did not stop over there. Sushuro Honda came up with the, the engine and he planted engine in the, in, in, the, in, in the cycle. And people came up with the engine and planted engine in the car and they made what? Motorcycles and cars. Now we were moving fast. Did we stop when we were moving fast? We were, we were, we were moving uh, fast, we were driving cars, but we did not stop. There were Wright brothers who said, no, 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 we don't want to be on the roads. We want to fly. Human beings became smarter. They tried, invented new what? Technology to become smarter. So we invented aeroplanes. But when we were commuting with aeroplanes, we did not. We, we weren't satisfied. So Granville said, why do we have to go from one place to another to what? Communicate our message. Why can't I just pick up a phone and talk? And that's what we do. So when we invented telephones, we thought we have become very smart. Now we can call each other. And then we invented what? Mobile phones. Now we had mobile phones, we could call, we could text message, we were calling uh, each other, we had those uh, Amazing ring phones, Nokia, Nokia phones, and we thought they were really smart. But then this guy, Steve Jobs, came and he said, "No, you, the phone that you have is not smart. This is a smartphone. This is what what defines smartness." So you would see that human race keeps on evolving and becoming smarter every day, and it does not stop. But then. There are these people and organizations and countries and communities who fail to evolve with time. So what they are suffering from is called dumb monkey syndrome. Dumb monkey syndrome is the inability of organization, and not only organization, but the people, the universities, the countries, the communities to adapt to the smarter technologies to evolve with time and change their practices. I'll give you an example. Do you remember these Kodak rolls? Does anyone still use these Kodak rolls now? No one. So Kodak actually invented, there was one engineer in Kodak who invented the digital camera technology and he went to his boss and said, Look, what have, I have developed a new technology which is a digital camera technology. And his boss said, we are in roll making business, we are in film making business, we make our money through films, we would not change our technology. Later on, Motorola adopted that and digital came up, cameras came. And what? They disrupted the whole Kodak organization. So Kodak was suffering from what? Dumb monkey syndrome. Another example, Nokia. You remember Nokia? We all use those Nokia phones. Around a, a, a few months ago, Nokia was sold to Microsoft. And when it was sold, in, in the, the final speech, the CEO of Nokia said, we didn't do anything wrong, but somehow we lost. That CEO of Nokia could not understand. They were doing everything right, but then they lost. Why? 
because they could not evolve with the smart technology. Blackberry could not evolve with the smart technology when the world was moving towards smarter technologies, Android uh, and iOS. They, they still uh, spend a lot of time on their old Indian technology, which means their inability to adapt and move forward uh, as, a, as a technology company was not working properly. They were suffering from dumb monkey syndrome. And the thing that I want to talk about over here is disruption. Disruption is something that's happening all around the world. So the literal meaning of disruption is something that is uh, something that destroys uh, uh, something existing. What's really happening with disruption nowadays is that the technology has the power to even change the way industry works completely. Do you know um, which logo is this? Anyone? It's the new logo of a company called Uber, and, and uh, as, on, uh, as already mentioned in the last presentation. Why did Uber came into existence? We think that Uber is a fantastic technology and it decides on what it is a fantastic mobile application, that's why it worked. No. It did not work because it was a fantastic piece of technology, a fantastic mobile application, or code really well. No. Uber came into existence because there was an existing problem in the taxi industry. The problem in the taxi industry was, taxi industry was defined by lots of rules and regulations. There was no ability to track taxis properly. There was no ability to call taxis easily. Even in the developed countries like USA and Australia, if we had to call a taxi, we had to call these guys and there was people at the customer care who, who took 10 or 15 minutes and used to tell us your taxi is coming. And it took a lot of time for taxi to come. There was this problem. The disruption happened because Uber identified this problem and solved this problem. Which means taxi industry would have survived by itself if it would have evolved with the time. Taxi industry was again something by what? Dumb monkey syndrome. Another example. Airbnb. It's an amazing example of an organization that disrupted the whole accommodation industry. Why did accommodation industry need an Airbnb? Because accommodation industry in itself did not evolve with time. Now, you can go uh, to Airbnb and find an amazing place to stay. You don't have to rely on shady hotels because you can see the reviews. You, you, have, you have all those interactions with the people who are involved. You can see, see where that place is. You can read the actual reviews and go to that particular place. And disruption would happen everywhere. And I'm talking about this today is because we as IT practitioners need to identify that disruption will affect almost everything that we are doing. And it has just started. So if we feel that we would be able to cope up with disruption or this particular industry would not undergo disruption, this wouldn't happen. Which means that companies that exist today will not exist after four or five years. The technologies that exist today will not exist after four or five years. The things that you are studying today or, or, or researching on today will not exist in four to five years. Their application would evolve a lot. Has disruption stopped? Like, can we say that uh, the disruption has already done its over? One of the biggest disruptions that happened from Kodak was coming of digital cameras, right? The sales of digital cameras had dropped drastically. Why? Because mobile phone comes with the, with, the, with the camera technology. And we have got smartphones. But are smartphones smart enough is a question. Will they survive a long time? If we are developing our capabilities in smartphone technologies, what will happen after two years or three years or four years? Will this technology survive? <laughs> I don't think so that this technology will survive uh, uh, after four or five years. Or maybe, maybe it may survive, but will start declining. Why? Why? Because of these things. Internet of things. Because the world will not stop evolving. The world will become smarter with, with time. Why do I have to look at a mobile screen to, to find something? Why can't it be all around me? 
Why can't I just touch and feel technology? Technology should not be something where you have to invest your efforts learning something. Technology should be something interactive. I, I received a message, I can just put my head out there and see what message is. I want to track something, I can just swipe my head, or not even swipe my head, I can't think about it and it will appear. It's going to happen, it's happening with augmented reality, internet of things, uh, of course, uh, virtual reality. When all of these things would, would come together, the smartphone technology would not be smart enough. So what's the smarter way, is the question. And these are the, the smarter things that our company focuses on. So we were earlier focusing on, of course, mobile, mobile application development and uh, there, there are things 